Hi, I'm Helen Rice, and today I'm delighted to introduce you to my friend, Julie Parker. She is gifted in this really unique, I would call it a skill, a tool, called face reading. So Julie, please, uh, let me see if I got this right. Face reading started 3,000 years ago with some kind of monks. Yes? Thank you, Helen, yes. <laughs> About 3,000 years ago, Taoist monks were the original healers and advisors for Chinese emperors. They were healers and they used the five elements from traditional Chinese medicine to diagnose illnesses that people had. And they were called upon by the emperors and, the, and their officials to come in and help them when it came time to interview people that they were considering doing work with. They wanted to know their personalities. They wanted to know their skills. They wanted to know whether they could be trusted, what level of integrity they had, how they behaved, their thoughts. Oh my gosh. It's fascinating things that, that you can get from just reading a face. It would be illegal today because you could screen employees for health issues, for integrity. That is fascinating. It is fascinating. So when you're reading today, uh, at this time on Earth, are you able to pick up health and what characteristics, skill sets? How does that work? If I see something that's very obvious, I will share that with the person that I'm reading. Health-wise. Health-wise. I always get a little bit nervous about talking about health issues because I'm not a doctor. I can pick up on their personalities, their talents, their skills, their behaviors, their, their true nature. Uh, calling in life. There's so many different things that can come up in a face. It's amazing. They all have every feature, every groove, every line has a meaning. Wow. You know who would benefit the most from that would be single people dating. Oh, absolutely. Or even going into a business deal, right? Partnership? Definitely. That would be so. So let me ask you about that a little bit. If uh, I have lots of friends that are single, if they were going to date somebody, they could bring you what, like a photo? What they could do is, if they're, an, if they're going online for looking for love, if they're going to singles groups or if they just know people or if they're dating people, if they're considering dating people, they could bring a photo, they could bring their birth date, and I could compare the two, tell them what their personality and their skill sets are, and their tendencies <laughs> to match <laughs> to match and to see how compatible they would be and from that selection they could choose who's the most attractive who's the most successful and who they would ultimately be ultimately be happy with so it could give you what inside scoop on okay so success what about things like uh, value or integrity absolutely and does it give you I mean is it could you know things about how the person might be in relationship or maybe with family, that kind of thing? Oh, definitely. It can tell you how emotionally open they would be, mm -hmm. how much they would share about their thoughts and feelings, how driven they'd be, how compassionate, and how about how their sex drive. That would be an important piece to yes. want to pick well for the future. Yes. Okay, so I'm happily married for many decades now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what about, like, you know, I'm understanding the face reading. I've seen you do some readings with some people I know, and it's, it's really fascinating. And one of the big questions I wanted to ask you, I love it because it's like astrology. It, it, it always brings us back to this big organization. So first of all, because not everybody is, has seen you work, uh, what are some of the things that face reading will tell somebody? Like, when you, if you were reading my face, you could tell me about different decades of my life. Exactly. How would you um, explain that? There are several different things that can be told about a person's face as well as their birth date. So from the face, you can tell different decades and different parts of the face. You can tell about their personality. You can tell life lessons or a, an extreme experience they may have had, and it could be extreme for them. It didn't have to be an extreme experience, but something that was significant to that person. Um, you can tell about their behaviors, Ooh. <laughs> how they are with money, um, if, how 
how nurturing they might be, how warm they might be. And there was the part you said originally the Dallas monks um, could diagnose health. My understanding of that was they weren't allowed to like actually touch females, so they learned to read certain things. And you actually pegged something on me through my nose. So you could really get into some health things too, right? Absolutely. And something that the nose talks about is both a decade, which is the 40s, and it also can talk about, can indicate a possibility of back pain. Very interesting. Which is interesting. Yeah. It is. Do you like that aspect, the health related part? I love that because that's what my nature and my passion has been for so long. So it's that ties healthy in and it. nutrition. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So Julie, I have a question because I personally have done a massive amount of work, <laughs> hard work, to evolve myself into to happiness, to come out of old childhood patterns, uh, to rise above, like, you know, I would term it above astrological influence. You know, what I would really first came in to explore, I always want to push the envelope and go further. So I know that you also ask, uh, when you're doing a reading, you ask for, what is it, the birth date? And how, how does that birth date tie in? And then, we'll, and then I'll ask you a bit more, but how does the birth date tie in first? So the birth, the Chinese believe that when we were born, we were imprinted with the energies that were present at that moment. So that from the, the, the year and the day, it determines what your main personality is, how you are going to react under stress, how you were as a child, your true calling in life, and your life's challenges. So that gives a bigger, more generic picture that can't be seen in the face. They call it hidden symmetry or nine star key. Nine star key. So you use that information and, you, and then from that broader base, you tie in information from the face? So that's general, and then I apply, I combine it with what I see in the face, because that's more specific. Okay, and so somebody like me, who's changed a lot, and I react very differently than I used to, <laughs> um, is that gonna show in the face too, or how would you pull that into a reading? It'll show up in the face in certain ways. Your features won't change. Um, the bone structures might not change. But say you were to gain or lose weight, it would, mm -hmm. to a degree. Now what does change is if you change your expressions. So different emotions. So if you were sad before and you're happy now, the oh, emotions, gonna... the, emotion, the, the, the lines and the wrinkles will, will change. You can actually, I mean, there are several people who have come in who have had very disappointing experiences and very unhappy in their lives. It's like the, the sad emoticon. They've got the downward smile. And they end up doing some inner work and they change their expressions. They become happier. And that whole smile changes. The lines around their mouth change. That is really interesting. I like that. <laughs> so, um, and then, because I find it so fascinating, you can see something about, you've pegged a few people I've seen, uh, you'll say, ooh, something really went on in your 20s. So you can actually see different uh, ages that might have had big experiences? Exactly. There are different decades that show up in the face. So for instance, the 20s shows up in the forehead. And when you have, when people experience intense emotional lessons or something to be learned from that time, it'll show up in the lines in the forehead. Usually, I earned these. <laughs> and if they go all the way across, that means you learn the lesson. If they oh, don't, I did earn these. <laughs> if they don't, that means there's still some work to be done. Uh, mine all go across, don't they? Raise your eyes. Yes. Oh, awesome. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once, just randomly, I had shown you a picture of my son just because it's cute, and I had it tucked somewhere, and. When he was little, he had these really big ears, and your comment was? Is he strong-willed? And I was like, wow, because he was so strong-willed as a child. He's actually now grown into his ears. Like, what does that mean? Like, he's, I think he's still strong-willed, but you well, won't notice his ears like you did for that first, you know, 18. Exactly. It's, it's, it, can, it can mean that they're strong-willed. It also um, shows an, a sense of independence. Yes, definitely. I don't think it really changes unless they just learn to adapt to it or recognize it and use it to their advantage. And I would say that is very accurate. 
Awesome. Because when they were really noticeable, it was quite obnoxious behavior. And now he's actually succeeding in life very well with that strong, independent will. I'm glad to hear that. That is so fascinating. It is fascinating. So how did you even get into this? Like, what, I mean, I hadn't really heard of it, and I play with a lot of cool people, so I'm surprised. So how did you first hear about it? Um, one of my friends told me about Nine Star Key, and she offered to give me my numbers. I had no idea what that was, so I did some research, and I found the author's website to the book Hidden Symmetry, and what I discovered was face reading. I saw nothing about Nine Star Key, nothing about birth date numbers. So after more research, I decided to, I was intrigued by the whole concept, and I decided to schedule an appointment for a reading. So I did. Oh, was it insightful? It was so insightful, and I felt so understood for the first time in my life. And I, I was given reasons why I am the way I am, why I behave and think the way I behave and think. And it was like permission to be me. It was, it was a good thing versus something that I always thought was just odd and unusual. Wow, I, I really like the way you said that. That So the information could help you just al align to self-acceptance and build on strengths, I would think, then. Absolutely. You might even see something as a strength that you maybe didn't before. Exactly. I think it's very common that people know who they are. Deep, uh, they know their nature, but it doesn't come through, and they, it's so close that they don't see it and expectations set upon us by family and friends and society. We're born with this, with this perp perfect purpose and then the expectations of society come in and we, because we want to be accepted and loved, we change. Mm. We get off our path. We get off our pattern. So this is a great way to help bring it back and help people rediscover who they are and what their purposes are. Wow, I love that. So. Uh, you feel, can you, can you kind of like bullet point that again for us? So if I w was going to tell a friend, hey, go check this out because you would get a reading and I believe you would receive clarity. Clarity of who you are, clarity of your, your, your purpose in life, um, issues to work on, strengths, weaknesses, emotional tendencies, ways of just permission to be who you are, recognizing your strengths and weaknesses, recognizing your qualities as good versus some people tend to make them negative. Because we've been taught that. Yes. <laughs> that is, I, I love that. That is so validating and empowering. So I see why you do enjoy this work. It's amazing. Truly amazing. So you had your first reading. Yes. You were blown away. Yes. You felt validated. Mm -hmm. You felt empowered. So is that when you decided you might like to explore it to do for other people? Well, I recognized that she had some classes, so I went and took the initial workshop. How long was that? That was four days. Wow. I had to read three That's books. a lot of... <laughs> three books in two months. <laughs> That's a lot of info. And then a few months later, she was offering a certification class. So I went and took the six days of certification. So it, were you practicing on other students oh yeah. there? So you're really getting a feel for it. We practiced there on other, on other classmates. I practiced on coworkers. I practiced just looking at pictures of people that I knew to get a better understanding of who they were and to see what I could get right. <laughs> to kind of test myself. And how was this, you know, in the marriage thing, uh, pointing out things to your husband? Did he find it empowering to you? Well, he found it very interesting. He found it fascinating, and he still We'll be sitting on the couch, and I'll be looking at him, and he'll just kind of put his hand <laughs> stop reading my face. But and it's as given, a wife, did it give you? It's given me a lot of understanding and insight as to who he is and his strengths and weaknesses, things that I would just criticize and judge before not knowing. Now I under, have a better understanding of who he is and different qualities about him that I never would have known before. Um, and it sounds like it's a different way to look at something. Absolutely. Whereas we might peg it as a weakness, but if we were to able to understand that's part of a bigger purpose, it could be a strength. And that's who they are. Yeah. That is that is really exciting. Okay, exciting. so you did your workshops, you read the books, you practiced, practiced, practiced. Uh, what was some of the feedback you were getting back? Because you had to have feedback to keep going. 
It's really brave to read somebody that you don't know for the first time and be paid. Well, it is. Um, and it's been very interesting. It's been fascinating. I don't know who it's more fun for, the client or for me, because I just, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so, it's just very rewarding. Um, several people have come in and just in the first 15 minutes of telling them about their, their main archetype, their nature, mm -hmm. it's like permission for them to be who they are. It's very empowering for them. So practicing over and over has given me, when I touch on something and someone starts to cry, it's so heartwarming. Because they're really being Because validated. they're releasing, they're actually healing from something and they're recognizing, they're accepting themselves and giving themselves permission to be who they are and becoming empowered by it. Oh, I love that. It's just, it's fabulous. I love that. And then also, so I, I get that with the life purpose, with validating maybe what you've been through in your life and that you're on path and how much you've come through. Tell me a little more like the health aspect because I know that is a passion for you. It is. So uh, if, would somebody come to you for like, hey, something's going on, can you give me some information? Did so I would be happy to talk to somebody if they had a health issue that was concerning them. The training that I have done so far touches a little bit on that. I've done a little bit more research on my own to get a better idea. I can't diagnose because I'm not a doctor. Right. But I could see if there's anything in their face that pops out. And so that would give us information like this was just part of the plan or there's you want to pay attention to a certain emotion or nutrition. Exactly. Like, or there's something to change or something that's maybe an allergy or um, a sensitivity to a certain type of food or something on a little level, on a small level. And also I can give them um, ideas of things to change either that could also help with their uh, on a healthy level, on a physical physical level. That's very interesting. So you really giving me a much broader picture of this whole thing. So the face reading is really a cohesive look at a person spiritually because the purpose, right? right. Um, emotionally, you're going to talk about traits and patterns. Yes. Um, physically, it could be about health, right? Or structure in the body. Have I left anything out? That's really body, exciting. mind, and soul. Body, mind, and soul. That's it. It's well, all big package. Yeah. That is fascinating. So I hear you say that you love it because it's empowering and it validates people. And, and what I like is it sounds like it just helps you quit wasting time. Don't try to change the strong-willed child. Learn how to work with the strong will. Exactly. <laughs> um, I like that aspect. What else is your favorite part about it for you personally? Well, it's very rewarding to be able to help people. I love to help people. I love to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and a couple people, one of the reads I, readings that I had done for one of the gals who you know said within 15 minutes, we had just done a little mini reading, a 15 minute reading, and she said in 15 minutes I was, a, I was able to, to figure out and help her figure out what took her three months or I don't remember how long it was for she and her coach or her therapist to figure out. Wow, that's So powerful. that was very validating and reassuring for me. Oh and, yeah, especially in a 15 minute oh, yeah. reading. <laughs> it was just, I, I was so, I just felt very touched by that. Well, how much time would you really prefer in a full reading? I prefer an hour. And you want the birth date for the nine key, that's K-I? Nine, nine star key. Nine star key. So it's the letter, the number nine star, the word star, and then K-I. Okay. You would want that information like when somebody books. Right. So you do a little pre-work. Right. So there, there are different ways that I do this. I have one package that's the full reading, which is the face as well as the birth date together. It gives the full picture. And that's, that's one hour. hour. Okay. And I have another one, which is a half an hour. I don't mind doing half hours for people who have already done a full hour session with, so they have some a foundation to go off of. Oh, so if I've come to you for a full reading, I could come back six months, a year later, just to say, hey, what's going on? Or If there's a situation they like help with, or someone in their life that they have, they're, they're experiencing a struggle or a challenge with, we can apply it to that. I did see you read for a friend of mine uh, for a picture of her brother, and that was fascinating. It really shifted things for her and how she perceived him, and she just said it was really beneficial for her, her relationship. That is very cool. That was exciting. It was a lot of fun. So nobody's off limits. Nobody. <laughs> Parents, 
spouses, friends, kids, as I said before, online dating or just dating in general. A business deals business that would be deals. really good if you want to work with somebody. Definitely. It would just give you a bigger, broader insight, not to catch anybody being wrong, but to be better prepared. Exactly. And to show up better in our interactions with others. Exactly. And some of the other packages that I offer are, um, as I said, the full hour reading, the half hour reading, which is both the face reading as well as nine star key. I also offer the online dating packages, the compatibility packages, or just a nine star key birthday reading if someone wants a quickie that doesn't want to have a full face reading. Wow. So it's just a little bit of Oh, everything. I like the package idea for the yeah. uh, single people. Very good. I want to ask you to, what's the most prominent thing on my face? Your cheeks. My cheeks are? Your cheeks. You know, I read the book and I was like, okay, so I couldn't think what what was the most prominent. So my cheeks are, so what do my cheeks say? What is that wood, metal? That's earth. My so cheeks the, are earth? Oh yeah. Well, there's two, there's two pieces of, about your cheeks. One talks about the, the archetype of the mother. Oh, This is the nails. nurturing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nurturing tendency. Um, home is very important to you, connecting with people. Feeding people, whether that be food or information, education. <laughs> a guilty thing. Yeah. Um, there's also, a, right here in your cheeks, the little roundness in your cheeks talks about comfort speaking up in a, like an authority for yourself or for others. So if you feel like something's, if you've been wronged, you'll stand up and say something. Today, or, I earned these cheeks then because I couldn't speak up before. So would it have been different structurally? Or is that something that I wanted to grow into? Like if I would have had a reading long ago, that would have given me advice, um, hey, you want to learn to speak up for yourself. You're out of alignment. Or can I ask you this question? Mm -hmm. Did you feel comfortable speaking up for other people in the past and just not yourself? Absolutely. Okay, oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> so that's metal and earth. All right, But cool. the cheeks are definitely and the dominant feature. And so different sections of my face are different eras, like these are the 20s, right? right? And so this is the 50s? Just above the mouth is the 50s. Oh, I have this uh, lucky mole there. That's good, right? That is good luck. That is good luck. And then 60s is, is about the chin area. How's that looking? Because that's coming up faster it's, it's than I... It's looking good. It's, it's looking good? Yeah, it's okay. very good. Like what's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> and then 70s, the jawline, and then it goes just the sides of the cheeks, the sides of the face, 80s, 90s, and then it starts all over again at 100. But it starts in the ears. Right. The um, one Zero through, to 13. One ear is like through seven and then the teen years. And um, so specifically on the face, you'll have markings where an event happened. It could be an event. It could be something that comes up later. It could be something that happened in the past that needs to be dealt with or that has yet to be dealt with. Oh, <laughs> well, I think I'd prefer those that have been dealt with. No, it's good to know. It's good to know so you're prepared. Okay, so is my dominant element wood? Earth? Earth. 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 Definitely earth. Because when I was going through the book, I was like, oh, I can see a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Well, everybody has all, all the elements within them, but there might be one or two that are more dominant than the others. And then bringing in the birthday, you're all earth. All three is earth. So you've got a lot of earth. Whew. And if you'd like some information on your birthday, I can tell you a little bit about that too, what that says. Did you look it up? Oh, of course I did. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then I'm going to call you out on that. Okay. So the, that's the nine star key. Yes. What's my purpose? So purpose is, um, has to do with mother issues. Well, A, it's earth, earth all the way across the board. The last two numbers are the same. They talk about mothers. Or mother issues. Maybe your mother wasn't there for you, didn't protect you, wasn't, didn't teach you how to receive, wasn't the type of mother that you needed. That doesn't mean she was a bad mother, but mm -hmm. that means that she wasn't there. For, she didn't provide for you what you were needing as a child. It also talks about being a very hard worker. Things have to be hard. There has to be a lot of struggle. Um, Glad I outgrew that one. Yes. The need, over, sometimes over Actually, giving. I worked really hard to get out of the hard work belief. <laughs> so there's something else I want to touch on as well. Your first number 
which is interesting. The first half of your life, you support others. Then there's a big life event that happens, which is an opportunity for you, for you to step into your own power. Is that, what age is that? I can't tell you what age. It's somewhere like between 30 and 50. Kind of like midlife area. Okay. So something significant happens, and people who actually take that as an opportunity and go with it, mm -hmm. empower themselves. Well, I can tell you then, I was wondering, is it now? Because I feel like I'm in a whole new chapter. But if it was between 30 and 50, it would absolutely be having my own children because I rewrote every um, paradigm, every belief, every experience of what I perceived I didn't get as a child. I healed that aspect by how I parented my children. And it's my greatest joy in life is the experience I had being a mom, still being a mom of adults now. Um, so I would say yes, that's what got me in gear to do a better job. And I you've wanted, done a great job. And and now and I'm reaping the it. benefits, which you is lovely. It. That's a really cool thing to know. Okay, so any scoop? I always felt like 50s would be really good for me. So it's really interesting that I have the... Have, have you always had that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so the lines next to your nose that come down by your, by your mouth mm -hmm. are purpose lines. That means that you're on track for your nature and for your life's purpose. I also see betrayal marks next to your eyes. Get out! <laughs> Where are they? Here are your little indentations right here. Oh, yeah. I've been exploring that in this lifetime. I also see a very openness when it comes to being, uh, expressing your emotions to other people, sharing with other people. Um, there's a kindness with which you speak to people. And if I could ask you to look at the camera so I could see your profile. There's a creativity in with which you find solutions to problems. I love brainstorming. Yeah. And I do see big picture, so yes. And you have joy lines, which are awesome. People usually give wrinkles a bad, a bad rap, but those, they're called crow's feet. You know, we know them as crow's feet, but they're a good thing. That means that you have joy in your life and you're a joyful person and people will approach you and feel comfortable with you. So what about these, little, these lines, the two here? Okay, so. So I know that's from doing that. They're not that deep, which is nice. They seem to be getting less. And that's a good thing because those are intense thinking lines. Those can be anger lines and they're dissipating. And one is a little bit deeper than the other. But they're straight up, so they're like focus, intense focus and concentration. <laughs> yeah. And it could have been a little bit of anger as well in the past. Yep. So they're, they're dissipating, which is awesome. That is really cool. And I loved what the idea of, if it's expression, I could put tape there. And when I feel the tape, think, catch what my thoughts are. That Whatever thoughts a, and emotions you feel when, that, when you're trying to figure out what the lines mean. That is such exactly. a Exactly, cool it tells you what emotions are causing that. Okay, so, so you had- can change if you want to. So mother and the earth, purpose, what's, what, were there any other challenges in my birthday that you would have wanted to share with me? Well, there's the concept of giving, over giving sometimes, <laughs> not having boundaries with giving, the enjoyment of giving, which is great, helping people and being there, a great friend, great support, great and power for other people. Um, over giving and not being reciprocated to. And yeah, the way I language that is definitely hardcore codependent, for martyr, <laughs> the whole bit in the beginning. Learn to balance that and now it's just very joyous. Very good. That is so cool. That's fascinating. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so how do we find you? Well, for more information or to book a session, you can go to my, web, my website, which is www.yourinnerblueprint.com. A session or a package, or the dating package. package, that is so cool, great idea. And that's your, Y-O-U-R, inner, I-N-N-E-R, blueprint.com, right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for joining us, Julie. This is great. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much for having me.